Hello, good evening, and welcome to today's edition of Reality is a Moment with Susie. I hope everybody's had a lovely week and are all ready for the weekend. Now, for today's show, I had a change of topic just last night after watching um, a program. Um, we were going to discuss Syria and um, should the allies or whatever we call them, Western world, should they go into Syria? But no, watch this program. And this program was on um, disappearing fathers. And I thought, yes, do you know what? Loads of them fathers out there always disappear and leave the women to do all the job. But then, while I was having, I think I put a status on my Facebook, and while I was having that conversation with a few of my friends on Facebook, I had a change of heart and I thought, you know what? In spite of the fact that there are millions, millions and millions of deadbeat fathers, as we call them, who act as sperm donors, have the kids and disappear, there are a few, a few, a few men out there who really, really want contact with, those, with their kids and they struggle to have that contact and there might be some out there who also don't have contact and don't know the way to go about it. So for tonight's show, I am going to be discussing being a single father and the struggles that some single fathers go through. And to help me with this conversation, I have my good friend, Olu with me. Olu, really. Olu, thank you so much for coming on the show with me tonight. Okay. Thank you for accepting the request in such a short time. But no, you see, for me, Olu, now, it was quite important for me that you came. And one of the reasons why it was quite important for me that you actually came on the show is because I know you very well. I think um, there are stories that you hear all over the place and you know people tell you stories but you never ever know because you know what they say they say there's his story her story and there's the truth so there's three sides of the story so they say but with you I know you quite well we actually went to university the same university didn't we so we've known all those years back I won't say how far um, <laughs> We also had the privilege of working together in my social work days. And so I know that you are an upright citizen or you wouldn't be able to work in such a profession. Now do me a favor, Olu. So many people have this notion that men find it very easy to walk away from relationships. And then because of that, we've ended up with loads of kids growing up in single parent homes and a lot of people believe that or some people have never met fathers that are struggling to have contact with their kids now i know that you're one of those fathers so during this show can we ever talk about that about your experience how it came about what happened and also just before we start the discussion i want to say to our viewers out there guys please remember this is an interactive program Please ring in, ask questions, contribute to what we're saying. The number's going to be scrolled at the bottom of the screen. Let's have this show together. Thank you. So, Olu, could you tell us a bit about your experience so far? Let's, uh, let's start. It's good to start. We can summarize it. Let's start from the beginning. Um, obviously, there's some things I'm going to leave out. Oh, definitely. Yeah. But... Um, what I found um, is that the um, establishment, so to speak, are always quick to take sides with the woman. And um, okay, it's you know, it's people who talk about deadbeat fighters and all that. But I'm like you, I'm um, pointed out earlier on. There are actually quite a lot of people who have been fighting um, to have contact with their kids, and I'm one of those fathers. Um, my um, the ex puts herself in a situation. Um, that she couldn't handle and um, the best way for her, she thought at that point, was to um, run away with my children. How, um, many, how many kids? Are we three children. About, sorry. So three kids, yes. Yeah. Three children. And um, unless you've actually been through that, there are no words to describe the pain and the void that that um, leaves in your life. You know, the, um, yeah. I'm, I'm still going through it at the moment. And um, so people talk about deadbeat fathers, but um, you don't really hear about people... Um, who are actually struggling, you know, through the court system. 
um, the system was weighed against me right from the start, and um, I just felt like I was, um, I was struggling, you know, struggling um, to actually make my voice heard. Yeah. So, um, yeah, finally things are a lot better now and all that, but I still haven't had any contact with my children in wow. over two and a half years. Wow. So, so, should we start from, so you, you were in a marriage? No, um, it was you're, a long-term relationship. Long-term relationship, yes. long -term relationship long -term with relationship. which you had three kids. Yeah. Yeah. The relationship broke down. Yes. And then, did she just go off, or to begin with, why, why, you, why the relationship had broken down when you having contact with the kids? Yes, yes, um, we lived separately for a while. Um, uh, I live on a small island and um, we live separately. Sorry, that's what I should have said, you live, you live. I live on a small island. Yeah, which is quite far, isn't it? And yes. So there aren't um, that many black people there. <laughs> there are a handful of us, we all know each yeah. other. But the, um, what actually happened was that, um, uh, the um, the system was actually um, weighed against me in the sense that they were ready to believe anything she told them and um, I found myself ignored, ignored and um, lots out of um, meetings while we deciding the future of my children and all that. And so, I that very unfair. Sorry, not to cut you off, but before we go to that stage, do you mind if I ask you, at what point was the contact that you were having with your kids? now counselled, at what point was that taken away from you? Well, you talk about um, parents um, using their kids um, as bait. Ex exactly. Not just as bait, um, but just using them, you know, um, for their purposes. Yeah. Um, after the sorry, it looks like we've got a call already. Hi, sorry, good evening. Hello. Hi. Hi. Hi, who am I talking to? Hi Olu. Oh, two Olu as well. Okay, great. Hi Olu. Hi. Yeah, hi. Uh, uh, hi. 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 Welcome to the show. We're talking about the struggles of single fathers today. Yes. I can hear you yeah. So what do you think about that? What do I think about it? I do feel for Mr. Well, I feel a lot for Mr. Irele. Am I right? I don't know how to pronounce Right. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Oh, you feel a lot for him. From his point of view, yeah. the lady was out with the kids, so he's been a lot more. Yes, I do feel a lot for him, because there's two sides to the story. For me, hey, the lady walks out with the kids, that makes sense that they just walk out with the kids. He yeah. actually walks out of the relationship, and he's trying to make an effort to have sex with the kids. And obviously, you don't know the real picture behind the story, you don't know what went wrong with the but well, I think the problem is, if there's no such communication between the two parties in the world, there will always be problems. Yeah. Okay, so if there's a breakdown in communication between the two... Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So, the other mother is one leaf, that one leaf, or the other leaf. But if there's a communication problem between the two parties, there will always be a problem. Yeah. But then only you need to but then only you need to think of Yeah, go on, sorry. Yeah, but only then you need to think of if you have a situation where like you you know, I can understand where you're coming from when you say you're a single parent, he has walked out, has not looked back. Because that is what we get most of the time with, you know, some of these men, bless them. But now we've got, a, we've got a situation of a father who wants contact with his kids. And I know you said that communication is the best key, 
But if that person is not communicating back to you, then isn't the courts the best way forward or the only way forward? Sometimes we need a break from paying those bills, don't we? Exactly. Yeah. Two sides of the story. Yeah. Uh, tell me about it. I've been paying it for three solid years. I mean, everything. Three years? Is that all? If you're not getting me involved, if you just want to see the kids, well, three years alone in this country, it's three kids. Olu, don't worry. I've, I've, I've been doing it for 12 years. Olu? Alu, thank you. Alu? I'm trying my best and I can see that you are. I'm trying my best and I can see that you are. But girl, what can we do? We just have to keep on with it. And like you said, if a woman finds a man like Olu, they should be grateful for what they have. Thank you so much for that. Thank you very much. All right, then. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, one of the most important things, um, one of the most important things I was actually going to say was, um, it's very wrong for parents to um, actually use the kids and put the kids in between. And a good example is um, when the ex um, actually ran off um, with my children. She allowed me to speak to my daughter um, a couple of times. She actually allowed me to speak to my daughter. So wait, can I just ask? So you guys were staying in the same town. Yes. And then one day she just upped yes, and left yes, without yes. telling you yes. where she was going, that she yes, was going. Yes. And that was it. Yes. So she allowed me to speak to my daughter a couple of times and um, then she cut that off. So obviously that's, um, that's about manipulation, that's about control, and it's about spite also. So um, yeah, we can talk about dead big fathers, you know, all we like. But um, the, fact of the, the fact of the matter is that the systems actually stuck against men in the, um, in the West, and that's the way it is. Do you know what? When you say the system is stacked against men, talking yeah. to you face to face now makes me feel different. But before I sat down here with you, I've heard a lot, you know, I have to admit, I've heard a lot of people say, oh, the system is stacked against men. And I've always said, no, it's not. The men are not doing enough. That's why they're not getting where they want to go. Why is it the women that are all... But, and, you know, sorry, my excuse would be that most of the time I see the women being left with the kids and the men not looking back. Or even if they look back, they look back to say hi or take the kids to eat McDonald's once in a while. So you haven't actually met any men that's actually fighting for contact for their own, um, for their own children? Do you know with what? Their children. You it's really, It's really, really sad, Olu, but I think you are maybe the fourth or fifth and bearing in mind i worked as a social worker with children you know it's really sad but i've got loads of friends who are single parents as well female female okay. low in short i can't count them on my hands and my toes okay i can add yours and still look for more hands and toes yes but i don't think it's right um for every man to be tired of the same brush as a deadbeat dad i know it and is, that's what society you know, is doing. yeah it is real and i agree with you and that was Part of why I say, you know, you know you've got that saying that says one bad apple spoils a whole bunch. But yeah, yeah. I think in, in the case of this, I think it's a case of you've got a barrel of rotten apples and one good one gets rotten <laughs> because the rest of them are rotten as well. But do you get what I'm saying though? Yes, I do. I understand you know, what you're saying. Yes, yes. But 
sorry, if we can continue with that. With your wife disappearing and giving partner. you, con with your partner, sorry, disappearing and now giving you phone contact with just your daughter and then she cut it, cut it off, what was the ne next step for you? I had to go to court. I had to go to court. I've been going to court for two years now. Um, this happened in 2011. I, I still went to court in July. Wow. And um, considering I live, you know, I live on a small island in um, South East England. I have to go all the way to Sheffield, um, to North England. Okay, she moved to Sheffield with the kids. Yes, yes. So, yeah, it's, a, it's, it's quite a stretch, as you can imagine. But I've got yeah. to do it for my kids. I love my kids. Yeah, yeah. And, I, you know, I don't know if this comes into it, but is she of a different culture? Or are you, are you of the same culture? Um, good question. Um, Caribbean, but um, born and raised in Sheffield. So, okay, um, so they're quite in, different. In Yorkshire, last, I'd say. Oh, bless. Oh, bless, quite different. So if there's... You see, I struggle because most of the men I know, most of the men I know, bless them, when there's separation, they are so, so deadbeat, bless them. Forgive me, uh, forgive me for saying that. But most of the men, they don't want to know. They just walk away. So meeting someone like you, who is 100%, you know, devoted and wants, you know, contact and is ready to fight to the last. Because one of the comments somebody said yesterday was, going to court is a waste of money. Do you agree with such a statement to no, fight for your kids? No, it's not. It's the right thing to do. It's the proper thing to do. You have to go through the, um, not even just the court process. Um, I went through um, children's services, actually. And um, you've worked, you know, you've worked in that sector. So you know yeah, what I have. Like. Yeah. And, um, what I found was um, I wasn't being listened to. As someone who has worked within children's services as well, because you have worked yes, in that I've profession young too. Like, yes, yes. With, yeah, with young people, but yes. you have worked within the profession, so yes. you know how it works. I know how it works. How did you feel? Uh, it's a quite, um, it's a quite, dif it's, it's a different kettle of fish compared to um, compared to London. Um, some parts of the country are actually very slow to catch up. You know. For instance, um, one of the things I pointed out and um, they had to instigate on my um, advice was um, none of the staff had had equality and diversity training. Wow. So how can you be dealing with a black family and you've never had equality and diversity training? And um, as a matter of fact, um, they were actually quite keen to help um, the ex because she was female. And that's where I felt and that's where I was made to feel and nobody gave a damn about that. And did you ever voice that to them? Yes, I went through all the proper channels. That's the most important thing, to go through the right channels. I went through the um, right channels. I complained, went to the local government ombudsman and everything. But um, the only joy that has come out of this is that the um, children's services where I live yeah. was deemed incompetent by Ofsted last year and put into administration. So, What, the whole of the children's yes, services? Yes, was deemed but incompetent and put into administration. So, you know... Um, I was right to voice consent about the way they handled us in the first place. But if they were deemed incompetent and put out of service, doesn't that make the whole case so far, doesn't that invalidate it and then say you need to start all over again? Because well, then any yes. assessments that they have done can't be used anymore. There were not many assessments done actually. Okay. <laughs> um, you know, we're flattering them here. There were not many assess assessments done. So that is part of the reason why they yes. were incomp... Incom yes. yes. God, I can't pronounce yeah. that word. In one one yeah. of the... <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Incompetence. <laughs> Incom Incompetence, sorry. Yeah. One of the most concerning things was um, they allowed my partner to... Um, the ex, rather, I won't say my partner. They allowed the ex to take my kids into an environment where three young people had just been released from prison for manslaughter and crack dealing. And, when, um, sorry, when you say environment, do you mean they were living within the house? They were in contact. Um, they're in contact with them at the moment and um, they've always been in contact with them, you know, because they're, they're cousins. They're cousins, so in, um, what I mean is they're my um, exes, ne um, nephews and nieces. And they didn't find that concerning at all? They didn't. That's really strange, isn't it? Yes. Because yes. for me, I think um, in my social work days, bless, I would have found that very concerning. Exactly. Like you have to go through um, the proper procedures and um, there's a whole process you have to go through. They um, circumvented the whole thing. Wow. So, so tell me, because there are, there are a whole load of men out there that 
you know, yeah, you know, relationships break down for different reasons. Either the relationship never ever started, but they had what sexual contact, and a child was the result of that, and so. You know, the man thinks, well, I've been cheated, and then he walks away, and a child is left behind. You understand? Or they were in a relationship, and the relationship broke down, and there were kids involved. So what do you think of men that just walk away? Irresponsible. There's no doubt about it. Um, it's a very irresponsible act. Um, if you bring a child into this world, you know, you must um, be obligated to um, help make sure that um, that child is safe and um, properly cared for. And... Um, you know, it, it takes two to make a baby, so exactly. it takes, you know, it takes two to, um, to raise a child. As, yeah. And um, in the African context, as we actually say, it, it takes a whole community to raise a child. And um, that's where the difference between um, other communities and um, the West is. For instance, in the, um, in the African or Asian um, communities, um, you think twice before you actually run off with somebody's um, kids. And before I even got to that stage, uh, members of the family would intervene and all yeah. that. Um, it, was, it, was, it was very easy for my ex to run off with the kids. Um, it wasn't, for instance, I would have expected um, the service to actually recommend mediation and things Definitely like that. Definitely, I yes, would None of that was brought up. None of that was brought up. Do you so. think it was because of the area you were in? Yes. Or do you think, right, because I'm just thinking that, bless, anyone listening to this uh, that would want to go into, you know, that anyone going into such, in, anyone in such a situation that would want to go and fight for their rights, they'd be like, boy, forget that. Because a lot of people have said, a lot of um, guys I find say, oh, you know what, the system's for women, it's not for men, they don't do anything to protect us. But my experience of the system is that if you're willing to fight for it, it will protect you. Am I wrong when I say that? Yes, you're wrong. It's Even not, in London? It doesn't always work that way. Okay. And um, you and I know about um, failures in the system. It happens. Oh, yes. The system has failures, I agree. The system does have failures. But at the same time, I think that being... If you're a person from a different culture than this culture it's harder to work with them or to understand how to work with them does that make sense it does make sense yes because i think there's a line to toe unfortunately within this culture when you're working with such people there's a line to toe and if you kind of follow that line you kind of get what you want but when you fight against it it's harder for you to get what you want does that make sense uh Yes, it does make sense. It makes sense, but um, <laughs> there's no doubt about it. From my own experience and um, from the experiences of other people that I've met along the way, the system starts against the men, and that's a fact. Wow. No, no, no. I mean, you've been through it, so I can't say, I can't say that is not true. So then with that, if you, knew, if you had a friend who was going through the court system, what would, be, what would your advice to them be? Stick to it, never give up. If you love your kids, never give up. In spite of what you went through? Yes, never give up. The system does work. There have been failures in the system, but um, I've been able to work within that system, despite um, the failures within it, and um, you know, hopefully one day I'll get what I want. Yeah. But um, some, a little bit of progress has been made, and like I said, I still haven't seen my children, but I'm optimistic about it. About seeing them? Mm. Wow. So, what would you advise guys that just walk away? Because I'll tell you what, there's so many guys that walk away, and listening to you, they would think, boy, no wonder I walked away because it's going to be hard to do this. And it's not you know, hard. if they don't have any investment in it in the first place, are they going to do that struggle anyway? Do you get me? Mm. But what advice would you give to them? If somebody's going to walk away from a situation, be it kids or whatever, they'll do that. There's nothing you can do to change that. Regardless. You know, um, there'll always be deadbeat dads, there'll always be deadbeat mums. But there'll be less deadbeat mums than there are deadbeat dads. Do you agree with me? Yes, yes. Yes, I agree with you. Sad but true. However, if you're, going through, if you're going through the court system, you have to have faith in the system. That you're working um, with. Yes, regardless of what about misgivings you have about the system. You have to have faith in the system that, you know, um, to an extent it will work on your behalf. 
it may sound a bit contradictory, but yeah. you have no choice but to work within the limitations and parameters of the system that exists. I guess um, you've been through it, and if anybody hasn't been through it and they're planning to, to, to go through it, it's good to hear about the challenges that they could be faced with because you've kept up the fight, but I'm sure so many people fall along the yeah, wayside yeah, and they think, yeah. I can't be doing with this. Yes. Because I'm sure it's cost you a lot of money as well. It's not just the money, the um, money is the, um, money's nothing. So it's affected my health badly. I was, um, to have three kids taken away from you just like that, yeah. um, there are no words to actually describe it, especially if you love your kids. And um, it was a very harrowing experience um, for me, still is. Um, I'm, I'm a lot better now, but it did take its toll on my health. Yeah. It took its toll on my health, and um, I was in a very bad place for a very long time. But um, you know, have to pick yourself up. You fall, you pick yourself up, dust yourself off, and um, life goes on. That is very true, you know. That is very true, because it does, and I guess a lot of people don't. A lot of women that use their kids as weapons or as, um, what's the word? As weapons or as leverage yeah. in the relationship. Yeah. Don't think of the impact that it could have on the man and the fact that it could even drive the man away. And the, fact of the, and the matter of the truth is, the relationship you have with a parent is totally different from the relationship you have with your partner. Yeah. And if you and your partner don't get on, that is your business. But at the end of the day, you've decided to give birth to kids and they need a relationship with both, don't they? Yeah, yeah. And so you yeah. have a duty. Anyway, I believe in karma. But I believe in what goes around comes around. Yes, and but you've made a very, um, you've made a very important point there. Um, a woman can teach a boy how to become a man and a man can teach a girl how to become a woman. Parents should play their roles and the kids need them. But when you say that, like that, when you say that, then I would turn around and say to you, so what if the, what if the man had died? What, what if the woman had died as well? But what if the man had died? Who, somebody's got to teach them. So a lot of people move on and will say they've moved on to another relationship. So they do have a man there that is going to teach that child to either be a, a man or a woman, depending on which parent has moved on. So then yes. what would you say? Yes, um, the funny thing is um, children will always find role models, whether good or bad. Yeah. Children will always find um, role models. So um, be it a girl, be it a boy, you know, if um, one parent is missing, um, you know, there's always, yeah, there's always um, somebody else or something else to take the void, to fill in that void. And um, a lot of people, yes, a lot of women um, raise kids um, successfully, you know. I have nothing but respect for women who've raised um, kids successfully. And um, yeah, it's, it, it happens all the time. But um, also, people have actually ignored the fact that men are actually capable of um, raising children too. I would never ignore that fact because I've seen it happen. Exactly. I don't think, I think the most important thing is that a child is in a safe and secure environment where they're being nurtured in an appropriate manner, yeah. regardless of whether it is with the man or the woman. Or whether it's with yes. same sexes or whatever. But I, find, I find you know um, what I mean. I, I find, but I find um, when a woman has raised um, a kid, or a couple of kids on her own, everybody's like, "Oh, what's a strong woman?" and all that, and you know. But um, when a man does it, they say, "Oh, you know, yes, what do you expect?" And um, it's, it's it's quite challenging raising kids. It's actually quite challenging raising yeah, kids. Yeah, but I think rewarding and challenging. Yeah, and I think the reason why people do, why people say that, is more often or not, the woman is the one who is left holding the child. So, you know, come We're out of it. Nine that. out of us. Uh? We're going back to that. Yeah, nine out of ten men walk away. One in ten want to stay. Where did, you get those, that? where did you get those stats from? Oh, I, should have I should have Googled this, shouldn't I? I don't know. That's what I'm used to. <laughs> Sorry, don't let me give anybody misinformation. It all depends on the area. But the show that I watched last night was on Disappearing Fathers. Okay. And apparently you have some areas where 75%, so that's 7.5 out of 10, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Where 75% of fathers are missing. And they actually call those areas... 
man deserts <laughs> because the men are missing but i feel that that is in our face all the time there are so there are so many single parents out there that can tell their stories i feel it's very important to also appreciate the fathers there that are also doing the same thing because they usually don't get seen unless exactly. they're taking the kids to school. That's the point I was Or making. unless you've got um, a man in a Batman suit, you know, one of these father of justice climbing up Buckingham Palace or climbing up some tall building. That's when you hear about them. The, um, it's sad, but um, men have had to resort to, um, men have had to resort to that to actually get their voices heard. You know, if the system actually worked, then you wouldn't have um, organizations like Fathers for Justice and um, all the other little organizations out there. You know, um, there are not, not a lot of support groups for fathers. Can I ask you, have you, have you ever joined any of the support groups? There are no support groups for fathers. Um, I've, met like, I've met people who have been through the same experience or are going through yeah. the same experience with me. And um, we, don't get <laughs> we don't get together like... Um, like some sort of um, sad father society or, or whatever, you know, but um, officially there's a lot of help out there for women and um, all you have to do is make um, an allegation and um, they put in a shelter and all that. But um, what about battered men and what about, you know, all the other things that happen to men? There are no support structures for men out there, you know. And um, whenever you hear about men, it's usually um, negative. very negative. So, yeah, it's usually that they are abusers, that, you know, they've done something terrible and they need but I have seen or I have heard of a situation whereby a lady was last to leave the house by the police because she had abused the man but also like you said funny enough in spite of the fact that she had abused the guy the child wasn't taken from her the child left with her yeah it happens whereby if it was a man yeah he would be asked to leave yeah without the child yeah the um and the um, flip side of all that is that um, there's actually something fundamentally wrong with the system whereby um, people can just um, run away from their responsibilities. And um, if there's a place where there's 75% of um, missing fathers, then um, that should be alarming and that should be concerning. And that says a lot about the society we live in. 75% missing fathers. Either any way you look at it, it's actually um, quite high. But can I say something to you? As, um, as a single parent myself, the thought of going to run after someone for money, I can't be bothered. Because that time that I need to, that I would have used to run after someone for money, I need to work, I need to spend that time working. So at the end of the day, it's too stressful. It, ad it adds to the stress that you already have. Yes, um, but not everybody thinks like you. Not everybody yeah, thinks is, like you, and um, some true. some women um, some women do it more than once. Some women do yeah. it more than once. I've scored with the kids more than once, as was um, in my case. As as, she, I was the second person she did it to. And wait, hold on a sec. This gets very serious. Yes. So she had she was she had two kids previously with her um, ex partner over in Sheffield. Ran away with his kids, and that's when I met her. So so when you met her, her, she had two kids already. So when you met her, was, she, was that guy looking for the kids? No, not really, but um, he did make contact eventually. Um, but he wasn't looking for the kids like, I've been looking for my, like I was looking for my kids. And so did you help her raise those kids? Those yes, I did. Kids? To the teenagers, yes, I did. Wow. And then you also went along and had three of your own yes, with her? Yes, I've raised five kids all together. Wow. Yes. And you don't have any contact with any of those kids at the moment? No, we raised five kids and ended up with them. Does, sorry, and this I'm going to ask you something. It might it might feel a bit personal. So tell me if it does. I will. Does does this hold you back from getting into relationships with other women? Does it? No. Or? No. It just um, you learn lessons, don't you? Um, these yeah. things happen to you. Learn from them, and um, you move on. No, it hasn't deterred me in any way. That's what oh, that's sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I've learned lessons. I need being nosy there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you just, um, you learn from that and you know what to do, what to look out for and um, yeah, you know, you learn from that and um, use those experiences to move on. What, so do you think there were signs that you could have seen before that would have told you that she could have done this then? 
that you've missed along Hinds the way? Hindsight is a good thing to have. So basically, if you had known what you know now? I had an inkling, but I didn't think she'd actually uh, go through with it. Right. But then, I'm just thinking that, because one thing I never thought was that in this country, I didn't think that anyone could just walk away with... After something's just clicked. So you, t so you weren't married, you were in a relationship. Does that mean that you didn't have parental responsibility for the kids by law? At that point, um, the law changed recently. So if she did that now, I'd have um, shared responsibility. But the fact that I actually nurtured my kids and my name is on the birth certificate. And um, just before she um, left with the kids, the older boy actually lived with me. Right. So, you know, if that answers your questions. If that happened now. Hi, so it seems like we've got a call. Hi, good evening. If that happened Hi, sorry, please, could you turn your computer or your laptop down, please? Hi, sorry, please, could you turn your... Oh, God, I can hear myself. Hi, good evening. Sorry, can we turn it off a bit? Sorry, hi. Hi, can you hear me now? I've turned it off. Can yeah, I can hear you now. Sorry, who am I speaking to? Okay, it's me, Hi, I didn't hear what you said. It's Bumi calling from London. Hi, Bumi. How are you? Sorry, the volume was down a bit. How are you? Very well, thank you. Oh, thank you for calling in. Have you been Have you been watching? Not from the beginning. I just um, tuned in. Uh, I was taking care of the kids, so I'm sorry about that. But um, I was I was just listening to uh, the gentleman you got in the. Oh no. Yes, and um, I totally understand where he's coming from. Yeah. Um, when he said something about there are not a lot of support groups out there for men. Yeah. I think it is so true that men in, in our society today, in as much as I understand the fact that some men are actually irresponsible. Yeah. I also understand where he's coming from, where I believe that um, some men who are responsible yeah. are not being actually looked after, um, especially you know in the area of the you know, the society believes it's the man that is always abusing the women. Yeah. So we tend to feel towards taking care of the women and giving them attention. Yeah. You know, whereas there are, so, there are some men out there that, you know, they're taking care of the children by yeah. themselves and nobody's looking after them. And they're really battered. Yeah. And, and also, some, some, some women are really mean. You know, once there is a, whatever kind of a disagreement between them and their partner, they want to punish the practice to, you know, the children. Yeah. Either they deny them from seeing the children. But what they don't realize is that they're actually damaging those children yeah. further. Yeah. Because yeah. it's bad enough that you separate them, which has its own negative effect on the kids. So yeah. for you to deny them from seeing their, their father, that even worse. Yeah. So I understand, I understand where, you know, it, it's coming from. And I think we really need to you know, take care of our men and, and give, give them attention because some women are getting away with murder. That is true. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're right. I, mm. I agree with you 100%. Yeah. Yeah. 100. Yeah. Well, I mean, thank you so much for that call. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Have All right, time. then. Bye. Thank you. Do you know what? Mm. She is so right. Some of these women out there, they actually make me feel so ashamed to be a woman because... They use, you can't use a child as a bargaining tool. It's just not, it's not just right. And like she said, and I think I've done a program before on domestic violence, and I said, you know, at what point, it's like you walk into a house, it's like, oh, he beat me. But hold on a sec, why did he beat you? Because if you're having an argument with a man and then you grab him, and the man wants to go, and then you grab him, and then you start beating him, what do you expect back? And it's just like in the cases of kids, I agree, I agree with what Bumi said. Women tend to get a lot more sympathy. But also I think because of a lot of men run away, men get tarred, <laughs> all men now end up getting tarred with the same brush, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. But only tell me one thing. You're going through this at the moment. How about you start a support group? 
men are very proud. Um, it's actually difficult to get a group of men to come together to talk about things like this. Mm. And um, the police will often tell you that, um, the police will tell you that men that are in abusive relationships, that have been battered by their spouses, are actually quite reluctant to come forward. No, but then what about men that are single, that are single fathers or that are single and are fighting to have access, gain access to their kids? So how about you start one of those groups? You've been through it, you have the experience. Before that time, you spent a lot of time working with kids and young people. So how, no, because I'm just thinking that if somebody doesn't start it, and the most likely person to start it is a person that has been, been through, through it. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, um, yeah, you mentioned it here, so hopefully something will come of it. You yeah. Know, um, yeah, you've given us a platform. You've given, I appreciate that you've given me a platform, you know, to come here and talk about this. You know, as personal as personal as it is yeah you know and um hopefully something will come out of it that's why i've come and it's also don't forget apart from that it's a kind of um support system as well yes because yeah, i think exactly these type of things are very hard to talk about and and because it's something that is hardly ever heard of you have to explain the whole thing mm -hmm. you have to go through the whole story every time to explain the situation so at the end of the day, start a support group, see how many people you could get to join, and they become a form of support to you as well, because yeah. these are people that are going through yeah. the same thing yeah. as you. Yeah, and um, I've been through it for two and a half years, so I think um, I have enough experience to actually advise people on what to do. Exactly. And um, the worst bit of it now is um, because the legal aid system has changed, there's actually no legal aid. Um, to help people through this sort of thing at the moment. I know, that's another bad so, thing, um, isn't it? If you want to actually maximize, um, maximize your time and um, try and make the best of it in establishing contact with your children, then um, you know, if you contact me one way or the other, maybe I can give you advice on that. Exactly. You know, any men out there that are watching this. That is, oh, I hope any guys listening to this have heard that. Alou saying, you know, due to the legal aid, whereby before you could get lawyers yeah, free of yeah, charge, yeah. now the legal aid system has changed. You know, lawyers charge, you just walk in to see a lawyer and they charge you £30 yeah. pounds for a you know, for consultation, that is it. Just to say, hello, this is my situation. So the best people to talk to are people that have been through the same situation. Initially, I had to um, actually employ a private investigator to um, track them down and find out where my kids were. So are you saying, because sorry, I wanted to run back to that parental part of it, because I think um, until you have a breakdown, if you're not married, until you have a breakdown, a lot of fathers don't realise that they actually have parental responsibility for their kids. Hi, it seems like we have another call. Hi, good evening. Hi, Deji, how are you? Yeah, I'm very good, thank you. I quite, I quite um, 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 like the topic you guys are talking about. It's very interesting. Thank you, Deji. And you were meant to be here with us today as well, weren't you? Yes, I'm meant to be there, but unfortunately, <laughs> they have been, you know, been busy doing, you know, some few stuff. So I'm very sorry. I'm this uh, this wonderful um, discussion. I forgive you, but you're here online with us anyway. Dej, what would you, because you're a single father as well, but you do have contact, don't you? Repeat that again, please. You're a single father as well, who has regular contact. You have regular contact with your child, don't you? That's right, that's right. Was this something that was hard to start up? Sorry, I, I, I lost you there. Oh, sorry. No, Dave, what I was asking was, was the co for you to set up this contact with your child when your relationship broke down, was that a hard thing to do or was it an easy it process? It was really, really hard. It was very, very hard. Very, very hard. I tried on my best because, you know, I mean, I, um, two months after, you know, I, you know, after she had given birth, you know, we... We discussed about getting married and the law stuff, but you know it didn't work out. So you know I I left the house and and um, you know since that time it was really hard. And you know she got married after that. When she got married, I felt a bit frustrated that you know it was just like 
some few months down the line that she got married, you know, I mean, she didn't even, she wasn't patient enough, you know, things like that. Yeah. You know, so even now that she, you know, when she got married, it was in the past because I think the guy was actually saying, no, um, I don't want to, I don't, you know, I don't want any, you know, any contact or something like that. And maybe she was scared, you know, maybe she was scared that, um, she was scared maybe, she might lose the guy if, if um, she, you know, used to that contact, guy, yeah. If I tell the guy that, okay, look, um, this, 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 this guy needs to be seen as his daughter, you know, so, um, the, you know, the issues, we tried the issue for years, and, you know, until, until I was like, look, in most of the law, I have tried calls, you know, several times, the, you know, my solicitor have written letters to our address, it was really, really hard to see. It was really hard until, you know, I mean, a bit of, you know, a bit of effort, I put a lot of effort into it. You know, I tried, and um, finally, something just go into our mind and say, look, you know what? Let's, let's just, you know, all this drama, let's stop it. And now I take her off every two, two weeks. So it was, it's been a long shot. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, Deji, sorry. You said that you went through the court system as well, then? No, we were just about to. We okay. Because, I mean, she wasn't responding to any court letter, anything yeah. like that. She yeah. wouldn't respond. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I don't know why, but she just wasn't responding. And, you know, I think they would have, you know, the, the address, the actual address, which is, you know, it's the guy's house, so, you know, I mean... You know, I didn't, you know, I didn't even have our own address. It's the guy that, that owns the place, you know, that owns the address that, yeah. you know, that she moved it. So it was really, really difficult, you know. And, and um, at most of our lessons, most of our thing is not on that address, so, but that's the place she lives, you know. Yeah. So it was, you know, I mean, uh, and the, the, the solicitor, they tried to write her, she wouldn't respond. And something just got through to us, something just got in her. My sister, my sister called her and just, you know, played with her and look, so I'm beginning to see, beginning to see your, you know, his daughter. Yeah. You know, and my, my sister really flipped and said, okay, I understand, you know, I understand, okay, you know. And then what happened was we made a written letter, like a written agreement. Yeah. That split, like every two weeks. You know, is that what what is it? Uh, you know, you you want it? Uh, and say, okay, when my daughter comes to your house, I want her to be safe. I want this and that, which is which is I mean, which is normal. Which yeah, is, which is reasonable. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I'm the ass. I would not want anything to happen to my daughter, yeah. my own daughter. Mm -hmm. You know, so I said to her, I'm like, okay, yes, that is to me. We made that agreement, she signed it, I signed it as well, and she said, okay, this is how much I want every month. Yeah. So, and uh, I said, that's fine. Right. And she did directly say, money goes into account every month. And every now, you know, I go there, I, you know, I take, it, I take a train, you know, I just go there, pick up my car, so, uh, yeah. get in the car, come back home, spend weekend with me, we play a lot of we go to the farm, we go to I have a question for him. Deji, Deji, yeah, well, yeah. Deji, hold on. Olu has a question for you. If you stopped, okay. if you stopped um, paying your ex some money, do you think um, she will um, actually withhold contact with your daughter? Yeah, she might, but she's not in the past because when, there was a time I lost a job, you know, I lost my job, and something like that happened, and you know, she did something similar. You know, she's telling, and even sometimes you text her, you know, she wouldn't respond, and, and things like that happen. I mean, you know, like, because there's nothing like emotion in public, but we were not in yeah. any sort of relationship for her to sort of reason with me to tell oh, this is his idea. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. So now, he's and regulated, like, okay, if there's no money, if there's no money coming into my account, look. I'll give you one one grade, one month grade. After that, that's it. You're not gonna be a that. That is the, that is 
That is the agreement you have now. You know what, Deji? Sorry, I'm going to have to cut you off. Deji, I'm going to have to cut you off, but thank you so, so much. Yeah. Thank you so much, yeah? You're welcome, you're welcome. You know, anytime, anytime. All right, then. Thank you. Thanks, Deji. Thank you. May I just, may I just add, actually, yeah. if, um, even when you go through the court system, if the ex... If your ex says, oh, your child doesn't want to see you, even if you know it's a lie, the court has no way of enforcing that. But aren't the courts meant to have a mediator for the, char for the kids or child as well? In theory, yes, but it doesn't work like that. Um, all the time? Yeah, it doesn't work like that all the time. Sometimes you don't even see the mediator. It's somebody down the end of the phone. Wow. I think, oh, God. I think it gets heroin. I think it gets really sad. And I think especially when money gets involved, I think that as a woman, what I would say to any woman out there is if your partner hasn't got money to give you, don't let that be a stepping stone to stop you, to stop them from seeing a child. Because at the end of the day, to me, the child is not a meal ticket. Yeah, you gave birth to the child together. Yes, you want to, um, you feel that you should share the financial responsibilities of the child together. But also, you need to be very realistic. There are many single parents out there that do not see 10 pence from the father of the child. But at the same time, they would still be grateful if the father would have contact with the child. And yeah. it's not about money. Yeah. Because anything can happen. Yeah. I understand what you're saying. A lot of women just want um, the child to have contact with their father. And a lot of um, men are actually not stop stepping up to the plate. Yeah. So um, all I can say to the men out there that are thinking of, <laughs> don't be a deadbeat dad. If you don't have, um, if you don't have a good relationship with your, with your partner or whatever, or your wife or whatever, you know. And, um, don't, same, don't put it on the child. Exactly. And yeah. same thing goes for women, you know. Um, it's, 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 it's terrible actually um, putting the kids um, in between your quarrels. Yeah, yeah. You know, you just shouldn't do it. Yeah, no, you're, and you are 100% right, because at the end of the day, I think our women out there, and, you know, some men, need to stop and think of the effect, the after effect that it has on those kids. Yeah. And to tell you the honest truth, my full advice to any man or woman would be, if you don't want a child, put a cap on it. <laughs> Put a camera, then you don't even have this discussion in the first place. But, you know, uh, five, ten minutes of pleasure is not worth bringing in a child in the world for that child to be distressed because of the mistake. That child to be traumatized, to feel rejected because of that mistake. You but, you know, and you know, the worst thing is that there are so many people that were actually married, living happily together before. And as soon as the relationship breaks down, the men walk away and they don't look back because they don't have a relationship with a woman. I know, I know. I know these things happen. And, um, but it's not just men. Women do it too. That's, um, Listen, women can that's be very, 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 women can be evil sometimes. I'm a woman and I know. I'm not saying I'm a woman that is evil. I'm saying some women can be evil. Let's not get it wrong. Some women, you are very, very right. Some women can be very, very evil. And it's really, really sad because it's the kids that suffer. Yeah. Whoever is the wrong person. And but, um, on the downside to my situation is um, the kids will actually never know their Nigerian heritage. Well, put it this way. No, no. Put it this way. Thank God you went through the court systems. And at the end of the day, at any point of time that this situation gets resolved you are allowed to go back to your records and you can let them read the records and that is proof to them that you never gave up and that where you get to at the end of the day when you finally have that contact with them the reason why you are having that contact with them is because you fought for it nail and tooth because nobody that does not nobody that wants that does not want contact with their child would not fight for one, two, three years to have contact with their child. So, do you yeah, get me? Yeah, yeah. So just, ho just hold on to that thought and then, Olu, I'm gonna say to you, never ever give up.
I would never give just, up. I've never I'm, given up. And I feel so up. proud of you when you say that. Thank you I very feel much. so proud of you. Thank but you. Um, you know, at the end of the day. I hope that there are some men that are either watching now or are going to go and sit down and watch this show later on and from hearing you talk you are going to knock them into reality and they're going to be like whoa actually I've got a few kids or one child or two some of them have <laughs> got eight or seven hanging out there that have had no contact with me I need to I need to get my act together and I need to go out and have contact with those kids I, you know, I just pray you're yeah. going to inspire them and I pray that you are going to start some support group because you're saying that there's nothing out there. And I think there's nothing out there, especially for black men. Yes. yes. And Most unfortunately, especially. black men, bless them, have this foolish pride that can hold them back at times. That I'm too big to go there. What am I going there for? I don't need no help. And I'm hoping that you, your story will inspire them, that they're not alone. But I, you know, I want to say to you, Olu, a big, big thank you for coming on the show. I'm really, really grateful. My pleasure. And I hope, you know, from this, loads of more people will come on and reveal because these are the realities of life. And that's what we are actually here to deal with, the realities of life. Olu, thank you so much for coming on the show. And I want to say a big thank you to um, everyone that rang in. Thank you so, so much. I want to say a big thank you to my production team. Bless them. And guys, we're here next week with another topic, but thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. Good night.